Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and in this video I'm going to cover what Spriter does and what Spriter doesn't do. Spriter does allow you to make animations for games using the modular animation method, which means creating objects or characters that you're going to animate out of separate component parts, such as body part images, and then doing things like assigning bones, and then animating the character on the timeline by manipulating the sprites or the bones. Spriter, however, does not force you to use bones if bones would be counterintuitive or unnecessary for animating specific things, such as special effects. You can see here how this explosion animation uses only the images required to animate that explosion. If you want to create a basic animation in Spriter, it can be as simple as dragging your image onto the screen, going further along in the timeline, performing whatever transforms, rotations, and movements you want to happen in your animation, and then deciding if you want your animation to be a looping animation or an animation that just plays once, and your animation is done. While Spriter does offer full tweening and curve support per frame of the animation, it does not require you to uh, animate in a tweening mode. For example, you can set your keyframes to instantly change. For example, in uh, more traditional sort of page flipping style animations, each frame can be set to instant instead of a linear or a custom speed curve. And you can even go in a single animation from tweening to a section of the animation that would use uh, page flipping style animation. Similarly, Spriter does not require that each keyframe have the same exact sprite images or bones. For example, if you're animating uh, something like a swing attack, you can see as I scrub through this timeline here, the actual motion blur image only appears in the Z order or in the hierarchy when it's needed. It does not exist, it's not waiting and hiding for itself to be displayed at the appropriate moment. You drag it onto the canvas when you need it in your animation, and then you delete it from your animation when it's finished fading away. You can see here, it's no longer in the hierarchy because it no longer exists in the animation. So not only can Spriter allow you to have a completely different set or number of sprites and bones in any given keyframe of any animation and allow you to decide what type of tweening, if any, will occur between that keyframe and the next, the other thing you can control per frame is even the hierarchy of the bone structure. So here we have a robot uh, with art created uh, by Victology.com. And I've set up a fairly sophisticated bone system, not only for the robot himself, but for this massive rifle that's mounted currently on his back. But you can see here I created an animation where the robot reaches behind his back, draws the weapon, and then the weapon transforms or opens up. And you can see here, currently, and in the other animation, such as the idol, the, uh, the main bone of the gun, which or rifle, which in itself has several child bones and sprites, is currently a child of the main torso bone. But when it reaches the point, the keyframe, where the robot is going to be taking the pistol into his hand, or the rifle, I'm sorry, into his hand. Now the hierarchy changes so that the bone of the gun, the main bone of the gun, is now a child of the hand. Spriter does support onion skinning mode. And it supports uh, basic inverse kinematics and bone locking feature. Spriter does let you choose between its default smooth sampling mode and point sampling mode. 
point sampling mode will not invent new colors in your image while doing scaling and rotation. And then there's full-blown true pixel art mode, which as you can see when manipulating sprites and even rotating the bones that they're assigned to or moving the bones, it only allows you to move things in per pixel coordinates, which you can see better with actual pixel art. I'm in pixel art mode. So this is a low res 16 color image that I'm manipulating. You'll see when I move it, it has to move in per pixel increments and that nothing I do such as scaling or rotation will invent any new colors. So this is true nearest neighbor pixel art mode uh, transforms and scales in Spriter. Spriter does allow you to export finished animations uh, in whatever frames per second or number of frames you would like as separate sequential image files or sprite strips or sprite sheets. Spriter Pro does allow you to create, edit, and even stack character maps in order to create variations of characters, changing body part images, weapons, armor, and things of that sort. And these changes by character maps also affect the export. So here you can see we have an armored uh, caped goblin with a club and with a few simple quick, uh, clicks we can re-export the character as either a completely different character or in this case the same kind of character but with a different weapon and uh, different attire. And the greatest benefit Spriter has to offer is if you use actual Spriter animation data within uh, authoring systems or game engines that support uh, the Spriter format. Once your game engine is made to support the actual Spriter data format, you can do things like actually assign an unlimited number of collision rectangles um, to your animations that themselves can be assigned to bones, tweened, and can have a different uh, size and shape uh, per keyframe. You can also um, assign points which not only can designate the exact area within a keyframe of any animation where you would like for example a bullet or laser beam to be spawned from but you also can use these to designate the angle so you can see I can move this on in pixel art mode so it's going to uh, pixel perfect locations um, but you can see while I created it I could also set the angle for this little point uh, or I can select the point and use this little dial here or enter a specific number. So that point can be used to not only designate from where a specific uh, sprite will be either projected or shot or will be anchored to, uh, but also the specific angle that uh, the projectile will fly or um, that the anchored object would be uh, spawned at. And you could even trigger sound effects at given keyframes. For example, in a walk animation at the exact moment a foot hits the ground, you could trigger a sound of the actual footstep. Uh, you know, when a character gets it and is yelling or doing a like a super move and uh, and says the name of the move, all of these things can be triggered uh, perfectly within the Spriter uh, at the exact moment you want. The sound to be triggered. There's also uh, variables which you can set per per animation, per keyframe, uh, and I'll get into those details in a future video. And one really important thing to remember about Spriter that Spriter does not do is force you to use an animation style that you don't want, don't like, or are not accustomed to. For example, while Spriter is perfect for allowing the modular system of animation with or without bones, 
Uh, you are not obligated if you want to take advantage of the other Spriter features that I've just shown you, such as collision rectangles, uh, sound triggering variables, and uh, sort of anchor or spawning points. Um, you can create your animations, for example, in a 3D program or a 2D program of your choice, export them from those programs as sequential PNG images, and then very quickly and easily import them. Uh, in this example, we're going to take this pixel art um, walking Greek uh, hero, sort of a Spartan hero uh, character that I've created. We just select all of those frames, right-click, choose Import Selected into Animation, and then you just set the start time, which typically you want to start at zero, and in this case, we're going to make it take the entire duration of the animation, which is 1,000 milliseconds. And then all we have to do is click and drag this sprite out here, and we now have the animation within Spriter, ready to go, ready for you to set the exact duration. So let's say this walk was happening a little too fast for your liking. You can literally just go here to the uh, duration of the animation and let's say we'll increase it by four, 400. So it's now four, 1,400 instead of 1,000 milliseconds. Choose stretch keys and apply. And now that walk is slower, as you can see. And now I can trigger my sound effects, add collision rectangles, spawning points if I need, and things like that very, very easily and quickly. And don't forget, this is just the beginning. Spriter is not yet at version 1.0. Uh, there will always be a free and uh, very useful version of Spriter, which you can download and use from www.brashmonkey.com. Uh, and for now, until Spriter 1.0 is uh, released or imminent, you can get it at a, a strongly discounted uh, early adopter price of $25. And there are many great features yet to come for uh, both the free and the pro versions of Spriter uh, for version 1.0 and far beyond. Please keep an eye out for future updates on our Kickstarter page, Facebook page, and forums, which I will link to in the description of the video below. Thanks a lot for watching.